other measures of inequality. So before telling you about these measures, why we have written other measures? Because we have already discussed one measure of inequality, which is Lorentz curve. In Lorentz curve, the problem was it was not providing a number. <coughs> if there are two countries, looking at the Lorentz curve, in case if it satisfies Lorentz criteria, I can just say one country is more unequal than the other country. I cannot say how much because it doesn't provide a number. So that is one of the disadvantage of Lorentz curve. The another disadvantage of Lorentz curve is that in case the two Lorentz curves are going to cross, you will not have an answer. Lorentz curve will not be able to tell which country is more, is more unequal. Right? Now there are other measures of inequality apart from Lorentz curves. Now because there is a disadvantage which was there in Lorentz curve, we have other measures. Range, Kuznets ratio, mean absolute deviation, coefficient of variation. Let's look at range first. Range is just going to tell you maximum minus minimum. Maximum income minus minimum income. Simple. Uh, so if you have the classes, right, uh, that is if you have n distinct incomes which are given, j are the income classes, nj are the total number of individual earning that income, right, then you have this formula. The number, total number of individuals earning that income into yj, right. They say, Manlij, uh, you have uh, 10 individuals earning 500. 20 individuals earning 1000, 30 individuals earning 3000, something like this, right? So it is like this. So this is going to give you the total income, number of individuals in a particular class into income which they earn in that class. So 10 individuals earning 500, that is 10 into 500, 20 individuals earning 1000, that is 20 into 1000 and so on. So you just add all of them upon the number of individuals, right? So what you get is uh, average income. Right? That is what you get is the average income. Uh, fair enough. Now, the problem with the range is, range kya I mean, range is just doing this, that you have, uh, uh, you have the income distribution and uh, it is just telling you what is maximum minus minimum income. It is just telling you that. Now, you tell me one thing. Is it giving any attention to people who are in between? I'll give you an example also. Just have a look at this. And it also fails to satisfy Dalton's principle. We'll take up an example. The example says this, you look at this region and this region. In region A, everyone has same income. So what is the maximum income? Maximum income is, let's say 10 and minimum income is also 10, so there is range is 0. It means everyone is earning equal income, there is perfect equality as far as income is concerned. Let's take up this example and we will carry on this example throughout the lecture. 5, 7, 9, 12, 25. This is the income distribution. First individual earning 5, second individual earning 7 and so on like this. So what is the maximum income? 25. What is the minimum income? 5 and the range is 20. So as compared to this, of course, there is significant inequality. Now you tell me, have you given any importance to the numbers which are there in between? No, you haven't. There could be any other numbers between 5 and 25. Range will remain same. This could have been 6, 8, 17. It doesn't change anything. So range is maximum minus minimum. It will remain same only. So it is not paying any attention to the in-between numbers. First thing. Now, the second thing is that we have to check whether it satisfies the other criteria of measure of inequality. So what are the different criteria of measure of inequality? I told you earlier also, which were anonymity principle, population principle, relative income principle and Dalton's principle. You look at anonymity principle. You have what? 5, 7, 9, 12, 25. This is what the income distribution is. Now you swap the incomes. Let it be first individual earning 12, other individual earning 5, third individual earning 9, Fourth individual earning 12 and fifth individual earning 25. So you have swapped. Range is still the same, maximum minus minimum. So does it satisfy population principle? Yes. Because in, in sorry, does it satisfy anonymity principle? Yes. Because in, in anonymity principle, you're not concerned with who is earning what. You're only concerned with the income levels. Then population principle. Now population principle is what? Beta, you have this income distribution, right? You have replicated this distribution replicated this distribution. Does it change range? Let's have a look at this. What is the maximum income level here? 25. What is the minimum income level? 5. So range earlier was 20, range now is also same. That is 20. So does it satisfy your population principle? Yes, it does. Then you have relative income principle. So what is relative income principle? Relative income principle is, let's say, I multiply, ya divide, ya add, ya subtract by the same number, all income. So in this case, we have multiplied 
the initial distribution of income by 2 5 into 2 7 into 2 9 into 2 12 into 2 and 25 into 2 so what is the range range is uh, maximum minus minimum that is 40 earlier range was 20 now range is 40 so it is the scale invariant no it is not so is it satisfying population principle no it is not then you have Dalton's principle i hope you rem remember about Dalton's principle what was Dalton's principle telling you if you take up income of the poorer individual and you give that much income to the richer individual inequality should increase so supposedly you have the initial distribution which is 5 7 9 12 25 what I have done is that I have taken two middle uh, individuals, this 9 and 12 are individuals. And I have taken 2 from 9 and, and added this 2 back in 25, so 12. So I have taken 2 rupees from the third individual, he is a poorer individual. And I have added 2 rupees to the fourth individual, he is a richer individual. The new distribution is this 5, 7, 7, 14, 25. What is the range now? Range is 25 minus 5 which is 20. Supposedly, if this was my initial distribution, what I do is that I subtract 5 from the poorest individual and I add 5 to the richest individual. Then what happens? Inequality should increase. So now what is happening is the new distribution becomes the 0, 7, 9, 12, 30. Maximum minus minimum is 30 minus 0, 30. Inequality has increased. So you can't say it categorically whether Dalton's principle is going to be satisfied or not. So you've taken up an example in which if you take up some middle income, then Delta's principle is not satisfied. If you are actually uh, hitting the minimum or maximum numbers, then maybe Delta's principle is going to be satisfied. So you need to be very sure of this. So in a way, we will say Delta's principle is not satisfied because it should be satisfied in all cases. It is not satisfied, right? 